Consider this, a tomato. It's a staple in cuisines around the world, but now imagine it's the 1700s. I'm sitting at an aristocratic dining table in Europe. The guy next to me, he's just dropped dead to what we all believe is this poison fruit. But I'm wrong. It's actually lead poisoning from the pewter plates that we're eating off of. The tomato, it's blameless. The tomato, in fact, will go on to shape the world's cuisine. From the popularization of pizza in Naples in the 1880s to Joseph Campbell canning it as a soup in 1897 to the reimagining of Indian gravies in the early 1900s. The tomato becomes so ubiquitous, it's hard to imagine cuisine before it. For me, when it comes to tomatoes, I of course think about a dish that my mom makes. So we're gonna head up to her house now for her to show us because this is a tomato episode. Hi, I'm Catherine. I live in Connecticut in the United States and I'm Beryl's mother. The dish that I wanna share with you today is called green tomato bruschetta. Whenever anybody comes over, they always ask for Catherine's green tomatoes. They've been, they're always in our fridge. I think I've been making them for more than 25 years. And it's made of very rock hard green tomatoes, totally unripe, sliced thin. Yeah, Beryl, be careful because <laughs> if you slice your fingers on this. Yeah, okay, perfect, perfect. Added to that are spices and herbs and hot chili peppers, and then seeped in oil, stashed in the fridge for five days, and then oh. bring them out, and people See love ya. them. It's spicy, salty, delicious, and unusual. To assemble them, it's really easy. All you have to do is add alternating levels of ingredients. Looks really pretty in the jar. Fill it with oil, cap it, and off it goes. I love making this because, first of all, it's the end of the summer and there are those green tomatoes and it gives me lots of wonderful memories of spending time with my children, my husband, and my friends eating these green tomatoes and that all of my friends want to eat them too. So the jars belong in other people's refrigerators and that gives me huge joy. They're great. I think when people think about green tomatoes, they only think about frying them. I personally don't know of any other recipes. To me, this elevates the green tomato to a place that I don't know of any other recipes that make them as delicious as this one does. I think that you should try making them at home because Beryl really says it best about her mother. She says, for me, food is my love language, and it could be your love language too. They are so good. People are going to love you for making them. It's true. <laughs> As we know, cultures all around the world are super creative in how they cook tomatoes, so I'm gonna go home and cook four more tomato dishes from four countries. So let's get started. Oh man, I'm out of tomatoes. I need to plant some more in my virtual farm in the game Heyday, who's sponsoring today's episode. <laughs> Come back for those. You might be asking yourself, what is Heyday? Heyday is a free to play farm game that you can download in the App Store or on Google Play. My pigs are hungry. I've actually been playing this game for a really long time. My farm is tricked out. Okay, I'm gonna show you some parts of my farm. <laughs> I put all the crops together with all of the animals and I tried to keep things similar. So like, this is where I make the fabrics from the wool of the sheeps. And then over here, I have my honeybees. I think that this is my favorite area where all of the berries grow. I don't know, it's just like really pretty and like, oh, that's just like really satisfying to harvest. There she is, there's Asha. I just running around the farm. <laughs> I was first introduced to the game through my mother-in-law. She plays with all of her sisters and they have like a farm collective there and they all work together to help each other's farms out. They asked me to join them and I was actually really excited because his mom doesn't really speak English and this was a way that I was able to bond with her so I got really into the game. It's just nice here. My farm's a happy place. And it's really, really fun. It's actually like very relaxing. My roasted tomatoes are done. <laughs> and it's just a really fun game to come back to again and again because there's always something going on at your farm or at your friend's farm. It's a kind of game that's easy to jump into if you're like waiting for a dish to cook or if you just want to relax a little bit before bed. It's kind of comforting. I highly recommend downloading the game. You can use the link in my description or this QR code here on screen. The game is always putting out limited time events and right now it is currently Oktoberfest there where you can play for a lot of really cute stuff. Oh my God, look at this pig. I hope that I will see you all over out on the farm. <laughs>
My name is Deanna, I'm from Canada. The dish I'd like to share is called tomato butter. Tomato butter is essentially a homemade ketchup except chunkier and a little bit more mild in taste. We're already starting off with a problem. I'm supposed to peel these tomatoes, but I don't, uh, I don't think that's a thing. This is, this is not gonna peel. No, it's just tearing it. I'm not gonna peel them. Should I peel them? That's not right. I think, oh, oh my God. From touching those chilies, from setting it up, and then I rubbed my eye. Ah! Ah! It's like burning on my eyelid. <laughs> this is starting all crazy. Oh. Tomato butter is simple and adds so much to a dish. Growing up, I actually hated tomato butter, but it was always on the table for breakfast and sometimes lunch. I have to make this pickling spice bag, and I thought that I had cheesecloth, and I don't. So my thought is, I'm gonna take this tea bag, I'm gonna empty it out, and then I'm gonna put the stuff in the tea bag. That's the plan. <laughs> I'm very proud of this little bag. Wow. Sometimes my grandmother would give us jars of it for Christmas. So I just always associate tomato butter with my grandmother and being at my grandparents' place. I think the tomato is naturally sweet, but sometimes we just take away that sweetness to put it in savory dishes. So this dish really brings out the natural sweetness of tomatoes. Tomato butter is a condiment. My family usually would eat it with breakfast, so with eggs and toast and bacon. But honestly, wherever you use ketchup, you could use tomato butter as well. Truly a trust the process kind of recipe. This is wild. Wild and crazy, kids! Okay. My grandmother suffers from dementia now, so making her recipes just helps my family and I keep her memories alive and just have something that reminds us of her. I think people should try tomato butter because it's simple and adds so much to a dish. Even though the day started with me burning my eyes from rubbing chili on them, is it better? PSA, don't touch chilies and then rub your eyes. I don't know why I needed to say that, but apparently I needed to hear that. Oh God, idiot barrel. <laughs> I feel like it ended really successfully. This smells so interesting. We're just gonna go with like a, wow. It kind of does have ketchup vibes, but it's jammy. I'm really into this. I made myself this little picnic sandwich because I thought this seemed like a good thing for it to go on. Oh, that bread was crunchy. This is so good. The salty cheese and this sweet jammy tomato butter is sending me. This is amazing. Oh. I'd like us to take a moment and give me a round of applause for my makeshift spice bag. I'm very proud of this little bag. The bag is holding up. Because all of us probably do have that crusty, dusty old tea bag that like we took from a Best Western when we stayed there and they gave you free tea bags, you know, on top of the mini fridges. And you were like, yeah, I'm probably gonna drink it, but it was a weird flavor. And like, you weren't gonna drink blueberry elixir ever. So it's a great way to make a tiny spice bag if you're in a pinch. It held up. Justice for the tea bag cheesecloth. In the beginning, I was worried about peeling the tomatoes. You don't have to peel them because the skins will just come off. So I just went in and picked the skins off after the fact and it was totally, totally fine. Wow, this is like totally working. Definitely super easy to make, super delicious. Highly, highly recommend. Make yourself some tomato butter. Swing! Okay. Hi, Beryl. My name is Vivian. I live right outside Boston, Massachusetts. I am originally from China and moved away 13 years ago. The dish I would like to share is tomato and egg stir fry, or in Mandarin. I like the complexity of flavors in the dish and the simplicity in its making. It's a silky scrambled egg coated in a tomato sauce, 
that is savory umami with a hint of acidity and sweetness. It is incredibly versatile. My knife skills have definitely improved since I started this channel. I like feel like I used to get comments of people being like, oh my god, your fingers. I barely see those comments anymore. You can eat it over rice or with noodles or bao. Honestly, whatever carbs you prefer. It is one of the most common dishes in China, especially when it comes to home cooking. China is a rather diverse country with unique regional cuisines and cultures, but I believe most people can relate to a familiar taste. I feel like I'm having like one of those moments, like I don't really understand. She says to swirl it. Maybe she means to swirl it with my spatula, like that? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm just gonna let it get hot. Check back in. <laughs> So with distinct regional flavor profiles, every family makes it slightly different. <laughs> Learning new techniques is humbling. Who would have thought the hardest part would be scrambling? Not me. I thought scrambling was the easy part. I think this is what she meant. Like instead of big chunks. I'm calling it the most stressful scrambled eggs of my life. <laughs> Some may be sweeter and others may be saltier. It's definitely one of the staples in my house. Honestly, I have a dish so much growing up, it has almost become its own memory. My aunt's husband, or I call uncle, would dice the tomatoes really, really fine for that saltiness. And my grandma's version was simply a little sweeter. This is so surprising how much the tomatoes that were so dry and hard have already become so saucy in like two seconds. So saucy. Tomatoes are the base, but really the soul of this dish. Without tomatoes, it's just scrambled eggs. I have over the years tried using fried tofu or oyster mushroom or shabu beef slices in lieu of eggs in the dish, and it always worked out because of tomatoes. I added too much sugar by accident. I forgot that I cut it, so I'm just gonna add some more tomato sauce. This is why cooking is nice versus baking, because I can fix this. But if it was a cake, no. Okay, getting there. Raw tomatoes with sweet teeth, like a fresh, juicy balance of acidity and sweetness. So when cooked in oil on high heat, it brings out all the umami, that deep, rich, savory flavor we all know. And that's the beauty of tomatoes. It's the simplest ingredients, plus minimal effort. And you'll get a dish that never goes wrong. I think this recipe was very interesting for me because I messed up. Uh, I do think this will fix it though. Cause like, why wouldn't it? Like, I'm just gonna have a lot of this tomato sauce, but there are worse things in the world than having tomato sauce. But I do think that I reeled it back in and I, I do, well, let me taste it before I try to toot my own horn. Yeah, I think I fixed this. Okay, let me tell you about what happened. I did bad math. Actually, it's not that long a story. I did bad math. The dish needed a little bit of sugar and I forgot to half the sugar amount. So I just put it all in. And because of that, when I tasted it to just check the levels, I had a very, very sweet tomato sauce. Like, now it's so sweet. Oh no. This still has a little bit of sweetness, but it's in that like edging sweetness. It's not like, woo, that is a sugary mess. Aside from all that, I think this was a very successful dish. One of the surprising things for me about tomatoes is like, in the US especially, tomatoes are terrible. Unless you're spending a lot of money on them and like going to a farmer's market. I do think, in retrospect, I could have done diced canned tomatoes and it probably would have been like a little bit more flavorful and like a little bit better. Just, it was like the quality of tomatoes. It is what it is. I'm somebody who really likes eggs and ketchup, which might be slightly controversial. This is giving me like really elevated eggs and ketchup vibes with some hot rice. This would be so yummy. Hello, Berylund everyone. My name is Karen and I live in Beirut, Lebanon. The dish I want to share with you today is called tomato bulgur, or as we call it here in Lebanon, burgul abanabura. Burgul abanabura is what your Lebanese mom or teta, Nana, does when she runs out of ideas, is on a budget, and wants to do something quick, easy, healthy, feed the whole family. This is the best tool ever. <laughs> Starting off strong. That felt really good. 
perfect dice. My eyes are watering. It is basically three main ingredients, tomatoes, onions, and bulgur, oh. which are cooked together until softened. And I personally love to enjoy it at the end with complimentary laban, oh. which is a Lebanese yogurt that is more salty and savory than the Greek one. If you don't know what bulgur is, it's basically crushed wheat grains that can be a substitute for rice. They are very common here in the Middle East area, but especially their usage is common in Lebanon. I chose to talk about this dish in particular because it cannot get more Lebanese than this. It's literally made in every household. I grew up eating this dish as well as my grandmother and probably generations before her. The recipe is quite simple, really old, and I just love how this dish celebrates the simplicity of the Lebanese cuisine and how it can make you connect to your heritage and identity. I have to taste this one for seasoning. Okay, here's what it needs. Some cayenne, white pepper, salt, and I think a little lemon. Tomatoes are the star of this dish. The bulgur is just there to make them shine. People everywhere in the world should try this dish because it's a piece of my home, Lebanon, where everyone is welcome. I really hope that you give it a try and that you love it. And if there is any Lebanese watching me here in Lebanon or abroad, I urge you to yalla, grab your data and cook Burghul Amanadura together. For having never cooked with bulgur before, uh, this was surprisingly simple. It kind of just felt like I was making couscous by another name. I've eaten bulgur, but... It's so good. It's got like a little bit of crunch still. The tomato flavor is outstanding. I want to talk about something that I think comes up a lot where people ask like if I'm trying these dishes for the very first time on camera. The answer is yes and no. Sometimes with dishes, like yeah, I can't taste them as I cook them, but part of cooking, you do have to taste things for seasoning. So for this, I have to taste this one for seasoning. I tasted it after I opened it up and realized that it needed a little bit more acid, a little bit more salt, a little bit more heat. But I also feel like having a taste of something and then like sitting down, having a full bite, it's a different experience, but it is very important to taste your food as you're cooking it. I like that this dish comes with eating it with some sides. So this is with a little bit of pickled lemon with mint. That just skyrocketed that dish to like 10 out of 10. Mm. The lemna is like if you took Greek yogurt and then drained out all the liquid, what you're left with is that thick curd. And then this has mint and olive oil and it's pickled and it's like, crazy delicious. The second thing we get to eat this with is a pickle and these are actually Lebanese pickles and they're my favorite pickles. They're so good. They're made with different cucumbers that are not really grown in America and they're really vinegary. So like if you have a sensitive stomach, these are probably not the best pickles for you because they will burn a hole in you. But if you've got a stomach of steel, they're so good. Bulgur was not available in my neighborhood grocery store, so just in case you wanna try this, um, I'm leaving a link for it online so you could find it that way, but you will find it at most Middle Eastern markets. This was great, tomato-y, simple to execute, special tasting, yum. <laughs>My name is Yasmin and I'm from Egypt. The dish I want to share with you is Mahshil Tomotum, which is stuffed tomatoes. The tomato is in the shape of a bowl and is stuffed with a mixture of rice, tomatoes, onions, parsley, dill and cilantro. It's really delicious and I like the texture of it. Back with the choppy 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 wizard. One, two, three. You can do a barrel. No! I can't do it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> All right. Easy as pie. So easy. Let's just cut this next one smaller. The tomato being soft and juicy but at the same time have a bite in it. I love tasting the sweetness and tanginess and herbness inside my mouth. 
Stuffed vegetables or mahshi in general is a very common and old dish in Egypt. Everyone likes it and it's always on the table whether it's a special event or a normal weekday. It takes a lot of time and effort to make it so it's always seen as a gift or a sign of love from the grandmothers and mothers to their families. I have to hollow out this tomato. I've never hollowed out a tomato before, but I do have this tool, and this is for a zucchini to hollow it out to stuff, so maybe it'll work for a tomato. If not, I got a knife. Uh, uh, if I start, okay. Ooh. Why am I nervous? It's a tomato. Maybe I can cut the whole top off and then hollow it out like that, but then I want, Here's what I've decided, that you need to twist out the core and then slide the knife around to get rid of the ridges that are along the sides of the tomato. And then, this is probably rogue and not how they do it in Egypt. I just stab. I'm just stabbing at the center to just try to break up the core. It like works. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, there's a better way, but this is, the way I'm doing it. <laughs> this is a hollowed out tomato. Let's stuff it. Stuffed vegetables are usually eggplants, green bell peppers, onions, zucchini, and the least popular one of them all is the tomato. This is all going into the bottom, which is wild. You won't find stuffed tomatoes in restaurants and unfortunately many people doesn't even think about it when making mahshi. But my grandmother used to make it because she loved it so much and then my mother kept making it and honestly when I was a kid I didn't like the idea and I refused to even try it. Then after many years I felt curious and wondered why mom loves it that much and keep making it every time. This one exploded, as was to be expected, it was weak. Also, it's funny how the rice is like thick enough like hair. I have no idea how to take these out of here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take out the tiniest, most intact looking one, and I'm gonna try to just get it in the bowl. This is a serious operation. Careful. <laughs> and I understood why from the first bite it was a really unique taste inside my mouth. The tomato itself added so much flavor to the stuffing and not vice versa which I found it amazing. And from that moment till now I make sure we have stuffed tomatoes when making mahshi as it became connected to my mom and her dedication to make the dish that her mom also loved so much and I decided to keep making them to preserve the recipe and to continue this tradition of love. This is a good example of a dish that I have not tried a single bite of yet. Uh, it was a little bit difficult to make, I'm not gonna lie. Hollowing out the tomato was not something that necessarily came natural to me. Ugh. Is this right? What am I doing? Oh shit. I'm gonna walk away, I'm getting anxious. <laughs> of the four that I tried, one worked. This one did not make it. Ooh. The others kind of exploded and I don't know if that's because I put too much rice in them or the structural integrity of that tomato just pooped out. I just wanna be instantly good at everything. That's so much to ask. <laughs> All you need is one though to make it look good for a show. <laughs> okay, ooh, I did not need a knife. That cut right through. Honestly, this is great. Wow, very tomatoey. I was a little bit curious what the rice at the bottom was gonna be. I thought it's either going to be mushy mush or kind of uncooked. It's actually perfectly cooked. I put a little bit of crispy garlic on the top of this and ooh, it's working overtime, it's so good. This is like a very refreshing, light dish. I use chicken stock, but very easily you could have used vegetable stock and this is a great vegetarian meal. It's interesting to think that the Lebanese dish, which was 
bulgur, onion, and tomato, how different it tastes from this Egyptian dish, which was rice, onion, and tomato, I would have thought that there would have been a lot more overlap. The bulgur just has like a toastier flavor to it, whereas white rice is, you know, it, it's, it's white rice. This is it's white rice. Everything that I cooked in today's episode was fabulous. Love a tomato. Don't forget to check the description for everything that I talked about today, including all of the recipes. Another big thank you to Heyday for sponsoring today's episode. Don't forget that you can download the game using the QR code on screen or the link in the description. And in the meantime, here are two other shows that you might enjoy, including onions eh? and white rice toppings, some things that we used a lot of today.